Small businesses in Barbados have been encouraged to not only focus on the local market, but to view the world as their marketplace. Minister with Responsibility for the Sector, Dwight Sutherland, says his ministry's vision is to push businesses and entrepreneurs beyond these shores. He says a national standards registry is critical going forward. Having a national quality infrastructure model that seeks to address issues such as standards, metrology, testing, and certification, and indeed accreditation, has now become a necessity and will serve micro, small, and medium enterprises well. The development and enforcement of domestic and international standards is key to the greater integration of Barbados into the international trading system, whether it is services or with products. Entrepreneurs must now focus on standards to enhance their competitiveness. First Caribbean International Bank is revising its estimate of the expected credit losses as a result of government's recently concluded debt exchange exercise for Barbados dollar debt. The bank, which holds approximately U.S. $445 million in Barbados dollar-denominated debt instruments, is anticipating that incremental expected credit losses will now be recognized in its fourth quarter results, set to be published next month. Additionally, in a statement, CIBC First Caribbean has also revealed that it also holds U.S. $30 million in U.S. dollar-denominated government debt instruments, for which a specific restructuring plan has not yet been announced. The bank says a further U.S. $20 million in government debt is not expected to be included in the debt restructuring plan. Now, despite the challenges, the bank says its tier one and total capital ratios remain strong and an excess of regulatory requirements after recognizing the incremental losses. All right, time now to take a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. In Jamaica, Mayberry Jamaican Equities Limited was the volume leader with 3,520,660 units at $11.78 each. In Jamaica, Mayberry Jamaican Equities Limited was the volume leader with 3,520,660 units at $11.78 each and they were followed by Carreras Limited and Kingston Wharves Limited. In Trinidad and Tobago, Prestige Holdings Limited was the volume leader with 300,330 shares changing hands for a value of $2,252,475 they were followed by NCB Financial Group Limited and Guardian Holdings Limited. And in Barbados, First Caribbean International Bank was the volume leader, trading 61,566 shares at $2.86 each. And they were followed by Epley Caribbean Property Fund, SCC Development Fund and Goddard Enterprises Limited. Minding your business with the kind compliments of the Barbados Workers' Union Cooperative Credit Union Limited, who remind you to save smart and borrow smarter. Now, this is a pretty heavy piece of mahogany that I'm holding in my hand. It's almost been shaved down somewhat so far, but it's all part of leaving the legacy. And that's what's happening here at Skeet and Sun Workshop in the Valley St. George, where they make pieces of mahogany like this one and this one transform them into this. From restoration to construction, Skeet and Sun Workshop is seeking to keep some seldom seen traditions alive and well in Barbados when it comes to building furniture. The heart of the operation is at La Valley St. George where Grantly Skeet has been able to create some pieces of beauty over the years, from rocking chairs, to tables, to beds, but often with a flair for the very classic pieces. 
and while he has now reached the point where he has his own gas powered wood mill to quickly and easily cut down large old trees into thin slabs of wood, it wasn't always so easy. Grantley talked about his humble beginnings. I was working then in the Journal Post office and money then was very small, $104 a month. And at that time, my brother, he was a youngster, 16 years old, working at Angelus. And every now and then he would bring home a small piece of furniture and I fall in love with it. And I start from there, putting it together. And the very first piece I had built, I carried down to standards and the lady looked at it and she sent me back and she showed me what to do. And when I brought it back, she took it. And it was about three weeks then before that piece of car, she had took it on consignment. I can't remember the price she had sold it for, but when she told me to bring two more pieces, I had felt so glad and so good. And he says that early success boosted his confidence as a builder, as he specialized at the time in coffee tables, buffets, and hutches. And now he is passing on the baton to his son, Pedro, to take over and to maintain the age-old traditions of building and restoring antique furniture. And Pedro has already started to establish himself as a very skilled craftsman. I began my, my journey into the woodwork, basically, at, say, around say, seven, eight years old, learning under my father. And it was around Christmas time, you know, work would come in. And my dad would have me standing up on top of the workbench to hold down tabletops, right? Because the router would jump no to place, so my weight would hold them into place. And my journey began from there. Pedro adds that his specialty areas include French polishing and turning spindles. Spindles are turned with a lathe a big machine they come in various sizes but i have a big one here that i could turn from the smallest because when i was in cadets at st leonard's boys school they used to turn drumsticks for the majors staffs right and me turning spindles then i could make the biggest thing as seven foot long say uh, eight square eight square nine square ten square He's seven foot long. And he has now earned the reputation as one of the best, if not the best, in the island. He says while the company has a mostly residential clientele, they also offer services to other companies that need to have pieces of furniture fixed, restored, or improved. They are also looking to get into the export market in the region and beyond. Like create beds. I do I do chairs, dining sets, um, the whole living room. The whole liver room, um, Burby's chairs I do, which are antique pieces from the 6th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th century. They also do 21st century furniture also. And so it was now time for me to get down to some creativity and learn a few new skills because I must confess, I was just an average woodwork student at the Aline School. But with the benefit of the experience of the father and son team to guide me, I was actually pretty good by their account as I tried my hand at some French polishing and some cleaning. Not a bad job if I do say so myself. Meanwhile, the elder Skeet also shared his views about the high quality of wood that can actually be sourced right here in Barbados to build furniture. There is quite a number of wood in Barbados. I have discovered from the old timers that is very good. Amun, Pride of India, Cordia, stick and also the tree you call the bay leaf tree that produces a very good wood, wood. and I find by working small pieces of almond it is one of the most beautiful woods wood around that you would have come across and we wish them well and we certainly hope that they'll continue to keep the traditions alive but that's it for this week's edition of minding your business if you'd like to get in contact with Skeet and Sun Workshop, just give them a call at 427-6538 or 263-4358 or email skeets16 at hotmail.com. And also remember, for all your loan needs, 
whether small business or personal loans, just give the BWU Cooperative Credit Union a call at 436-5620 or email info at bwuccu.com. <laughs> Minding your business with the kind compliments of the Barbados Workers' Union Cooperative Credit Union Limited, who remind you to save smart and borrow smarter.